heading out to the bone bed right now. I'm gonna try to do a large square further back into the hill. It's hyper productive for smaller fossils. This will look phenomenal once it's prepped. It is day, what is it, day three of solo camping out here in South Dakota without a vehicle. I'm having a blast. There's no boredom doing this kind of thing. There's always something to do, whether it's, you know, getting stuff ready at camp, collecting sagebrush or firewood, digging. I've been working about 12 hours a day. And then when all that's said and done, dinner is cooked and eaten, pretty much ready for bed. Uh, it's, a, it's a good little life. Excited to see what kind of things will come out of ground in the next week or so. All right, so I got my initial dig pit dug here, and then I'm going to go back for that second part a little later in the afternoon. I'm pretty gassed from digging this first part. So about the geology here, you see the bottom layer is the hyperproductive layer that has the bigger teeth and larger bones. But there's the secondary layer, and I don't know if you can see, but the pebbles are down here. Then you have sand from about there to there. And then you have a second pebble layer right there and this second pebble layer is what we call the bird and mammal zone and since these are river and stream deposits this layer is much lower energy and maybe a smaller river but in certain areas it's hyper productive for smaller fossils so you'll get small teeth and mammal jaws and little complete theropod bones so for the small stuff this layer is really good wow so pretty sure I know what this is. This will be the first one from this site. Oh, it's in the super loose stuff. So it's just coming right out. Oh, look at that. It's a raptor claw. That is amazing. That is so cool. This will look phenomenal once it's prepped. So what I'm holding in my hand right now is a 66 million year old raptor claw. And as you can see, it's still encrusted with all the sandstone and original matrix that it was found in. So today we're going to unveil this claw from the stone for the first time in 66 million years. Okay, so we have the air compressor is fully powered up and we have our little claw here in the blast box behind the glass here we're ready to do air abrasion on this fossil air abrasion is a good first step the fossil is totally obscured in the sandstone and ironstone concretion that's encrusting the surface blasting that with compressed air and sodium bicarbonate will remove that matrix on a nearly microscopic level it's the best way especially for a small specimen like this where the matrix isn't super hard it's probably the best way to prepare it so we'll power up the machine here all right we're at about 60 psi
I've removed most of the matrix and you can see the bone quality of this is just beautiful. You know, it's this nice chocolate brown and really has a nice mineralization and sheen to it. There's a little ironstone still attached right in there that you can see and a few spots that just need a little touch up. But that is the majority of the prep that needs to be done for this specimen. You could restore the tip but I like to keep a lot of these fossils completely natural and as found. And this particular fossil doesn't need any crack fill or restoration for stabilization. So I'm just gonna leave it as a natural specimen. preparation of this raptor claw. Now it's time to do the final touch, which is adding the special adhesive called Paraloid, which is an archival plastic that will protect the specimen from changes in moisture and heat and cold and keep it sealed and safe from the elements. interesting about this mixture is it's actually dissolved in a solvent and that way when you paint it on the solvent evaporates and leaves an incredibly thin layer of paraloid that will completely seal the fossil and protect it. Mm -hmm. 